That was short. <laughs> I thought I had some more time there. How's everybody doing tonight? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm excited. Don't I say that every time? About this message. Because I tell you, uh, as I was listening to the radio today, um, listening to my five-minute program, it goes by so quick. Um, the show that was coming on was talking about what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm telling you, you will enjoy this. Now, I will forewarn you to get your pens out because there are a lot of scriptures. And my wife said, why do you always give a lot of scriptures? Because I say I want the people to hear God and not me. I mean, I can have a lot of opinion, but it does you no good if it cannot be sustained by God's word. Would you agree there? So if you would, stand with me tonight. We're going to look at Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and verse 5. Man, this is good. Now, I'll forewarn you, the last time I preached this in 2007, I went 51 minutes. <laughs> so you gave me a little extra time tonight, so I'm like, Lord, you're setting it up perfect here. <laughs> Can you, hey, I let you go last time early. So I'm, I'm making up tonight. So I'm telling you. Luke chapter 12, and we're going to look at verse, look at verse 2. And, okay, Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. Are we there? It says, And I say unto you, my friends, that's good right there. Be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Listen up, he's telling you. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Let's pray. Father God, we come once again tonight. Lord God, just sitting in anticipation to hear from you tonight. Lord God, as we um, sit and listen, we know that your word, when it goes forth, it will not come back void. Lord, we ask that you bless everyone today. And Lord God, we pray that they not see me, but they see thee. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to be talking about the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? Well, whenever we hear fear, we think trembling and being scared. Well, that is some aspects to it as well. There are several meanings of fear. Normally fear that makes us do things that we should not do. And then also some fear that makes us do those things that we should do. Would you agree there? Think about when fear entered into the world. When did it start? Exactly. Adam and Eve, whenever they, whenever they had sinned, they hid themselves. And then God asked Adam, where art thou? And what was his response? He said, I was afraid and hid myself. Whenever we are disobedient to God, it brings punishment. Would you agree? So Adam hid himself. Now, fear... God gives us some information about fear. Proverbs 1 7, if you turn there. Here's what it says It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and 
instructions. So it is the beginning. It's just like when you go to school and you learn your ABCs, your one, two, threes, it builds the foundation. Well, God says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. You must have a fear of God in order to go on in your Christian wall. It all starts there. It's the foundation that we have this fear of God. You know, there's another scripture, Psalms 1, 11, verse 10. You don't have to turn there. But it says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So we see knowledge and wisdom. It's the beginning. So if we want to go far in our Christian walk and to please the Lord, we must have a fear of God. Now, in the Old Testament, the fear of God was a badge of honor. I'm going to give you a few here. Look at Job. We know Job chapter 1, verse 1. Listen to this. It says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect, upright, and get this, one that feared God and eschewed evil. So it was reported that Noah feared God. Do people say that about you? Hmm. Do you fear God? There you go. How do you know? Are you living upright? Are you eschewing evil? Or that means standing away, staying away from it? Avoiding it? What did God say about Job? Same chapter, verse 8. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, and one that feared God and eschewed evil? Wow. I don't know about you, but if Jesus, God is saying that about you, that's good. That you feared God. If you fear God, that means that no matter what Satan throws at you, you are going to trust in Him. Isn't that good? Here's another one. Moses' father-in-law told Moses to pick out men that feared God to help him lead the children of Israel. Look at Exodus chapter 18 verse 21. Exodus chapter 18 verse 21. We're talking about a badge of honor when you have the fear of God. Moreover, shalt thou provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten. But the criteria was that they feared God. Now here's a New Testament scripture to see that that continues to carry in the New Testament. Acts chapter 10, this is a good one, Acts chapter 10 verse 1 to 2. We're talking about the fear of God and a characteristic of a man when they have fear of God here. Okay, here's what it says. It says, There was a certain man in Sisera 
called Cornelius, a satirian of the band called the Italian band. Get this, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always. So, you see, when someone said you feared God, that means they saw something in you and they say, hey, that person's real. No matter what they go through, they fear God. Now, whenever we fear man, we get into trouble. Would you agree? Proverbs 29 25. Please look this one up. Proverbs 29, 25. Listen to this. And I'm telling you, I've seen this. You've probably seen it as well. It says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Think about that. Whenever we fear man, we get into trouble. We'll do those things that God told us not to do. Because some person has deceived us in thinking that was the right thing to do. I want you to think about a time where you feared man and didn't trust God. Think about it. You remember a time... Where you feared man and did not trust God? God told you to do something, but somebody discouraged you. And you didn't do it. Well, we gave an example last week of Caleb and Joshua. When they, Moses had sent him to, them to spy out the land, and they came back with a report, said, hey, there's giants. They were fearing men. That was a snare. But Caleb and Joshua believed God, and they did not fear man. If they would have feared man, they would have never conquered the land. So that's what we have to do. And think about it. Whenever we fear man over God, we are not trusting him. Is that right? I don't know if you remember the time when Jesus was in the boat and his disciples were went to get him. And he said, why are ye so fearful? And he said, ye of little faith. You will be fearful when you have no faith in God. And whenever you are looking at people, instead of looking at Christ, you're going to have trouble. Peter gave, gave the classic example when he was walking on water. He was doing fine while he was focusing on Jesus and believed that Jesus was going to deliver him. But when he started looking around, he began to sing. I found this adage here. I wanted to read it. It says, Fear keeps you from doing what you know is right and deceives you in doing what you know is wrong. Think about that. Isn't that what fear will do to you? Fear cripples you where you can't do things for Christ. Now, as our key verse says here, is that we ought to fear God rather than man. So Jesus tells us to fear. I got into this, I don't want to call it a debate, with somebody on Facebook. And thank God I got off of that thing for a while. I don't even want to go back on it. I'm back on it, but man, I'm telling you, that time away was good. I think I need to do it again. But I got into a debate. The person says, we shouldn't fear the Lord. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? And the scripture that they use, let's just go to look at it. Um, was, let's see here, 1 Timothy, no, 2 Timothy, 